The Magic Show is brought to you by StarCityGames.com, and check this out. The StarCityGames.com Open Series comes to Atlanta on May 1st and 2nd, and this event is going to be huge. We're talking hundreds of players, $10,000 in cash prizes, and at least eight players qualifying for the 2010 StarCityGames.com Invitational. Live coverage on the StarCityGames.com website, tons of side events, and as much magic to gathering as we can pack into one weekend. So make plans to join StarCityGames.com in Atlanta, and we'll see you there. This is Hugh Sturbikov. I'm one of the writers of Robot Chicken. I buy all the toys, which is a better job. And welcome to the Magic Show. Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of The Magic Show. This week we're going to be taking a look at the All-Stars and Rise of the Old Jazzy Limited, what our new standard environment may look like, address some concerns about the future of the show, and how a new rumored format may change everything about Extended and Legacy. Let's go! So this past weekend, pre-releases happened all over the country, and from what I can tell, it was a huge success. Record turnouts in some areas, and we had a ton of players getting down with those wacky and monstrous Eldrazi. But as the weekend went on, it was quickly apparent that there was one rare to rule them all, and that is Drana Colostria Blood Chief. Now, it's obvious she's good, but just how good? Star City Games' own Ferret highlighted how insane she was in his pre-release article, noting that she was pretty much unstoppable. He runs down the answers. For white, you can guard duty and still have it demolished your team, oust it and see it again in a few turns, or smite it if you keep a blocker around long enough to block her, which is pretty doubtful. Blue can narcolepsy it, and pretty much like guard duty will be destroyed by her ability, regress it only to see it again next turn, and if you're lucky you can unified will her on the way in. Black struggles to deal with her, as you need induced despair and a creature would convert a mana cost four or more, or if you're really lucky you'll get to virulent swipe a creature blocking Drana, but who lets their opponents have blockers with an ability like that? Red has the most answers, where most answers is defined by two, that being Flame Slash and Heat Ray. Explosive Revelation is also a possibility if you're feeling lucky. And Green? Green's got nothing. There is no Orin Reef Recluse in this set, and there is no Slingbow Trap. If you're playing Mono Green and your opponent drops Drana, I hope you're Alpha Striking next turn, or it's Frown Town for you. And it's not just Ferret noticing this. Wizard's own Aaron Forsyth tweeted about Drana's incredible over-the-top goodness in Limited, noting she would have been a mythic had she not been needed for the vampire-based intro pack. All I gotta say is, seeing what Drana can do in Limited could be an indication as to how good she could be in Standard. The problem is, of course, that there are infinite answers to Drana in Standard, whereas Rise of the Eldrazi Limited is a different beast altogether. Other revelations about Rise of the Eldrazi Limited included Levelers are awesome, <gasps> really? And Aura Narlet is insane with totem armors. Remember my preview Boar Umbra? This makes this guy a 6-6 that can only be blocked by things with 6 power or more. Yeah, that guy ends games pretty quickly. It's also apparent that those impossible mana costs, such as the 11 mana path raiser of Ulamog and his slightly cheaper but still creepy brother Sponsire of Ulamog at 10 mana, are very much castable and will have an impact on your limited environment. Wizards claim that Rise of the Eldrazi would be a unique limited play experience, and they weren't kidding. I trust all of you out there have your own impressions of this wacky and incredibly different limited environment, and I look forward to hearing about them in the feedback. Switching gears for a minute, I've gotten quite a few comments over the past few weeks about the Magic Show getting too commercialized, that I've sold out, and that I don't bash on anything any longer. Well, it's true that I have held off on some bashing from time to time, but the reason isn't that I sold out. The reason is twofold. First, bashing on cards without context is a recipe for trouble. A year or two ago, I bashed on a little card called Spectral Procession, calling it one of the worst in the cycle of colorless hybrid cards. Needless to say, after it got second place at Pro Tour Kyoto, I looked a wee bit foolish. Secondly, as I've been doing this for a few years now, I've realized that such bashing really isn't necessary. Every card, no matter how bad, is loved by somebody or is perfect for the format in which it was designed. Hell, sometimes cards are bad just so they can make other cards look good. For example, Magma, 
hate this guy. He's freaking horrible. He is underpowered, should have been able to sack lands, and is one of the worst rares in the set. May he die in a fire of chimney imps. But in limited, eh, he looks pretty solid. While you can't pay for his ability using the Eldrazi spawn you're probably sacrificing anyway, eh, what are you going to do? For that matter, he is an answer to Drawn Colostria Blood Chief that I mentioned earlier. So no matter how much I dislike this guy in Constructed, he fills a role, he has a job, and he does that job well. But still, I hate this guy. He is my con for the set. Magma! Magma! M moving on. So this past week, one hell of a juicy rumor popped up in the rumor mail. Wizards is thinking of creating a new constructed format consisting of cards of Mercadian Masks forward with very few things banned. Now this of course got the juices flowing in fanboys around the world. First, why is this format even being discussed? Well, it has to do with the reserve list. This stupid list that has haunted Magic for a decade and a half now finally got set in stone a few weeks ago. Nothing on it, no matter how promo-y will ever be reprinted again ever. And this is kind of a big deal when you realize that dual lands are the most integral part of playing a good legacy deck. This means your mana base normally starts at several hundred dollars and only goes up from there. But before they sealed their reserve list forever a few weeks ago, the idea that they could reprint a few cards on it as promo foils for from the vault sets or judge foils was still a possibility. Now that possibility is gone, legacy is only getting more expensive and something needs to be done. That something is this format. Many are calling it overextended for a few reasons. One, it's a cute reference as to how players are kind of tired of extended. While it was definitely a good idea to put extended in a solid rotation that changes every fall, tournament attendance for extended events and PTQs has been steadily falling for years now. Basically, players only play it when they have to play it, and that's not really a healthy format in my opinion. Secondly, there are more legacy events ran each year than extended events now, meaning that players really enjoy playing with their cards both old and new. Thirdly, you begin with Mercadian Masks because that's where the reserve list ends. Wizards finally came to their senses with this block, and thankfully this block also contains legacy favorites like Brainstorm and Dark Ritual. Now while this format is again just a rumor, there is just enough truth here to suggest that this is actually being entertained by Wizards. What does Wizards need now? Your feedback and reactions. Believe it or not, Wizards of the Coast keeps quite a close eye on forums, YouTube feedback, and does in fact read the email sent to them, so if you have an opinion on a format like this, now's the time to express it. The rumor continues that this format could be used as both a PTQ season and a Pro Tour constructed format if it proves popular enough, and that popularity comes from you guys watching this show. If you like this format, leave a comment saying so. If you don't, leave a comment saying so. You can discuss this format over at the StarCityGames.com Facebook page, Twitter Daily MTG, or leave a comment here on YouTube. I assure you, someone is listening, and if we champion this thing enough, it just might get there. Why do I want this format to succeed? Because it gives Wizards a reason to reprint Force of Will, which would obviously warp standard for a time, reprint dual lands as snow duels, most likely, allowing the goodness of duels while jumping through the silly hoop of no exact reprints set down by the reserve list, and will allow any reprinting of a card in the format to make it more accessible and make future Wizards products more exciting. In other words, good stuff all around. Will this change legacy? Of course. Will it kill extended? You bet. But who will miss extended when you have a wide open format? Who will want to play legacy when the decks get a whole lot cheaper, staples can be reprinted at any time, and tournament support will only increase? I'm also intrigued by the very few cards banned idea, meaning that beyond Skull Clamp, every card is potentially legal. Sure, Entomb looks insane, but what's the powerful reanimation spell you play with it? Life and death? Stitched together? Gush could be banned thanks to Mind's Desire, Disciple of the Vault and or Aethervile may need the axe to keep affinity in check, and Sensei's Divining Top could get left behind simply because it's annoying. But my guess is that they start with Skull Clamp Band and go from there. I for one think this is a fantastic idea that gets me really excited about the possibilities. I hope Wizards embraces this fully, leaves Extended behind, and gives us a legacy format we can truly be happy with. Again, this is all up in the air, but it's definitely worth talking about and your opinion is needed. You've heard mine, so chime in where and when you can and let your voice be heard. Until next time, Magic players, this is Evan Irwin, tapping the cards so you don't have to.
always like the fatties. This is Hugh Sturbikov. I'm one of the writers for Robot Chicken. I buy all the toys, which is a better job. And welcome to the Magic Show, where um, people talk about magic. And here I am playing magic, losing badly, but enjoying myself. Um, I got some free cards though, which is pretty awesome. It's the only reason I'm here. Don't tell anybody, but I'm a swag whore. Um, is the camera still running? Because I shouldn't be saying these things, but uh, I find myself saying things. Shouldn't. Okay, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Uh, thank you.